So to begin with I'm going to open up a template file to show you how to use sketches in the part environment to create CNC cut files via Inventor IDWs or Inventor DWGs. This is a simple part with some holes and a cutout. I create two sketches at the end of the part, one for reference geometry and one for user geometry named cut file. So to start with, we'll edit the reference geometry sketch and delete the existing projected loop and reproject the face. This saves projecting through smaller sections of geometry off the edges of the part. Now I can start selecting geometry and setting a color that, which means that you can then use the quick select command in AutoCAD to layerize this stuff at a later date. I use yellow for internal cutouts, red for holes, and I leave the overall cut around the outside the default colour. Now if we jump into the cut file sketch, you can see that I have uh, user created geometry. I'm setting it as cyan, which is the colour I use for engraving geometry on a CNC machine. So I've created this geometry here um, to indicate that things need to be cut out after the part has been installed. Since this text is going to be CNC engraved, I've used the TXT font and the cyan colour as well. Now this part is ready to have its cut file generated, so we'll open up an IDW and start placing the views of this part and the other example parts I have in the same folder. Make sure you set the scale to 1 to 1. Annoyingly you have to set this each time. Notice how the scale's changed again. Just go through and place all of the parts. See how these geometries are on the visible edges layer? Well, I'm going to turn those off because we projected through the edges of all the parts in our reference geometry sketch in the part. So now there's no visible geometry, we're going to go in and get the model sketches from each of the parts. This turns on both the reference geometry and the cut file sketch created in the part. As you can see all the colours have been brought through but this particular part is missing the reference geometry sketch because I forgot to turn it on before I saved. Now I have to go back to the drawing, expand out the part and turn on the ref geo sketch so that it shows up. Notice how with the reference geometry sketch the display reference is already ticked whereas with the cut file one it isn't. This is because the reference geometry sketch only has reference geometry in it. Otherwise nothing would get displayed. This quirk is the reason why I have two sketches in the part environment. I'd rather do that than turn on each individual sketch in the drawing. Now you can see these geometries are on the sketch geometry layer as opposed to the visible edges layer. I turn the visible edges layer off so that we didn't get duplicate geometries in the cut file once they are exported to DWG. Now you can save this out to DWG. You could save it as an Inventor DWG, but I'm going to use an AutoCAD DWG. Just to check, I'm using the standard export options. In AutoCAD, let's have a look at the cut file. You can see straight away there's some problems here with the splines. I'm going to submit this as a bug to Autodesk but I thought I'd leave it in here so you can see that there's an issue and be aware of it going forwards. If we take a look at this text you can see that it's centerline text. This is one of the biggest advantages of using this technique for generating cut files. It's currently multi-line text but we can just explode that out to be single line.
What I normally do from here on in is quick select using colours and apply to layers and then I'll have to go through and polyline edit all of this geometry so that we end up with closed polylines since at the moment unfortunately they're all individual geometries.